Good evening and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Udijochi. We thank you for joining us. We begin with a meeting between the federal government and Labour. Both parties have agreed on 23.2, and 14 percentages for officials on levels 7, 8, 9, 10 to 14 and 15 to 17 on consequential adjustment of salaries arising from the new Minimum Wage Act 2019. Austin has the details. After three consecutive days of negotiation between the federal government and organized labor on the consequential adjustment of salaries arising from the new Minimum Wage Act of 2019, both parties have arrived at a compromise. I haven't reviewed The increase in the lowest paid person in this uh, wage structure at 30,000 naira for the grade level one, step one, that the grade level 07 officers should move up by 23.2% in their wage structure. In their wages. Grey level 08, 20%. Grey level 09, that's grey level 9, 19% increase. Grey level 10 to 14, 16% increase. Grey level 15 to 17, 14% increase. The minister also explained that the adjustment was made for federal government workers on other salary structures. The people in this compartment are people on the consolidated health system scale, CONHES, consolidated research institute scheme, corn rice, and the one for the teachers counties too, and those for corn was too, corn mess, corn teddies, and corn cars. For officers on this wage structure, grade level seven or is equivalent had an increase of 23.2%. Grade level 8 to 14, and its equivalent at 16% increase. And grade level 15 to 17, or its equivalent, had a 10.5% increase. He said similar adjustments were made for personnel of the military and paramilitary, which shall be communicated to them since they were not represented in the negotiating committee. Head of service and the president of the Nigeria Labor Congress say the percentages arrived at by the negotiating committee is a win-win for both parties. Because both sides sat down together there and worked out this agreement together. It was a collective um, decision. Clearly speaking, I think it was a collective process uh, and therefore what remains is actually to uh, implement and uh, workers to also benefit from it. With the payment template being worked out, implementation of the adjustment is expected to start soon. In Abuja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. Now to budget defense by some government agencies. The Senate Committee on Public Accounts is optimistic that President Buhari will assent to the federal audit bill already transmitted to him by the 8th National Assembly. The chairman of the committee, Matthew Urogide, during the budget defense by the Office of the Auditor General notes that the bill is aimed at addressing corrupt practices which the president is passionate about. National Assembly correspondent Vivian Edekwefo reports on this and more. Was part of the support of the National Assembly to fight corruption that the Federal Audit Bill was enacted to strengthen the operations of the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation to facilitate transparency in public spending. 
The right personnel are also identified as key requirements. No doubt that if we are able to put our decision in place properly, and we are able to check the government, the account of the federation properly. Of course, whatever is allocated to all the NDAs, we are able to give them for them to put a proper perspective on the check. Of course, the issue of corruption will be reduced the Auditor General of the Federation, Anthony Ayine, briefed the Senators on the performance of the 2019 budget and asked for more support for effective performance. In a related development, the House Committee on Public Service has pledged to support the Federal Civil Service Commission get adequate funding for its activities. Chairman of the committee, Sani Bala, after listening to the chairman of the commission, Belo Ingawa, during the budget defense, noted the need for increased funding. Our hands are tied at the back because we don't have budget. And if you don't have it, there's not much you can do in the system. I will not go out and you can, the nature of the job we're doing is not one that you start going shopping, shopping for favors. So we must make sure that we remain within the confines of what is available to us. In a general sense, we don't have any complaint from any quarter. So I will want to appreciate you and your management team for managing the place uh, very well. The committee acknowledged the cordial relationship between the two bodies. From the National Assembly, Vivian Itekwefo, NTA. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed, alongside Chief Executives of Parastatals on the Information and National Orientation have met with members of the Senate Committee on Information and National Orientation. Anthony Fawson has more. The meeting is an interactive one aimed at familiarizing with members of the committee. The Information and Culture Minister, La Mohammed, in his submission said there is the need for more funding for information management and enlightenment because its budget size is grossly inadequate citing some events he has to embark on for the image of the country. We don't have enough fund to execute these programs. I will say that given what we are, uh, given the kind of target we are giving ourselves, we are everywhere in Nigeria. There's no geopolitical zone in Nigeria, sir. But in the last three and a half years, we've not held town hall meetings. There's no geopolitical zone in Nigeria we have not visited to showcase the activities of government. We buy airtime on every major network. We are very active on the social media. But Mr. Chairman, sir, the kind of funding for the uh, for the ministry, we can do much better with more funding. Next in line was the director general of the Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed. He explained to the committee the operational model of the NTA and its role in building an egalitarian society. The state capital stations, the zonal centers, and the community stations have also, you know. Um, Given the breakdown of the functionality and status of each of these stations, abandoned projects that we have uh, in the NTA, most of them have to do with the, with the community stations. Um, the, the whole thing was started in 1999, but to get some of them are, are, are yet to be completed. In quick succession, other chief executives took turns to explain to the committee what their challenges are and areas of need to be able to function optimally. Members of the committee equally took time to ask succinct questions that would enable them have a clear picture of their operation and how to gauge their budget size. The interaction ended on a smooth note with the minister and his chief executives feeling satisfied just as the senators. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Away from budget defense, the Nigerian Air Force will establish its base in Dama through the Yobi State Capital as the construction of International Cargo Airport provides an opportunity to that effect. The Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, who disclosed this during an inspection and assessment visit 
to the cargo airport under construction, noted that the Air Force will also organize and conduct its counterinsurgency operation from the platform. Inusa Suleiman has details. The Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar alongside Governor Maima Labuni were at the Damatru International Cargo Airport under construction to inspect and assess facilities on ground as the Nigerian Air Force is entrusted in establishing its base in Yobe State. Located 25 kilometers away from Damatru District Capital, the cargo airport when completed, the Chief of Air Staff noted, will serve as one of its platforms in the northeast sub-region. While at the government house, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar told his host that he is on a mission to reposition and transform the Nigerian Air Force as more than 100 pilots, many engineers and technicians were trained. It's much easier to have facilities such as the fuel facilities so that our aircraft do not have to go back to the building in fuel. They can organize and operate from Yobi here and make sure that our communities in Yobi State are secured and safe. Nigeria Airport plays a very important role in the fight against the Boko Haram insurgency. The men and women of the Nigeria Airport are pathways who continue to do our country proud by undertaking those aerial campaigns to take out terrorists and insurgent camps. In the Matru, Yunus Suleiman. Still staying with the military, nine months after closure for security reasons, the Gaydam weekly market in Yobe State has been reopened for economic activities in the area and beyond. Governor Meimala Buni, while announcing the reopening of the market during a town hall meeting with stakeholders, said continued shutting down the market will further impoverish the people and worsen the security situation in the area. Again, Inusa Suleiman reports. These people are not celebrating election victory. These are residents of Gaydam Town, located 200 kilometers away from Damatru, the state capital, jubilating over the announcement by Governor Maimala Buni reopening their market nine months after its closure for security reasons. The governor, the theater commander of the Operation Lapia Dole, Major General Olusegun Adeni, and other top military commanders, as well as stakeholders, reached a decision to reopen the market that serves as means of livelihood to about 80% of the residents. In addressing the security situation, closure of the market is not a solution. Sometimes it is better to risk freeing the culprit than to condemn the innocent. While at the palace of the Emir of Gazargamu, Governor Mayim Alabuni had directed for the recruitment of additional 150 vigilantes to enhance surveillance and intelligence gathering in the community. In Dematru, Yunus Suleiman, NTA News. Still ahead on Nationwide, another fire disaster in Onisha. Details shortly. Don't go away. Nation Nigeria and Partners presents the third annual Africa Women Conference AWC 2019, a gathering of experts, institutions, corporate organizations, and individuals promoting the growth, stability, and development of African women, exploring viable options through which various resources available to African women can be channeled towards the sustainable development of the continent. Expected participants include wives of African heads of government, female parliamentarians, public office holders, entrepreneurs, and sustainable development partners. Theme, building a coalition to end gender inequality in Africa. Date 21st to 23rd November 2019. Venue, Kenzi Manara Palace, Marrakesh, Morocco. Chairperson of the occasion, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Bukhari, First Lady, Federal Republic of Nigeria. For participation and inquiries, visit www.africa-womenconference.org or call plus 234 806 AWC, building an Africa where every woman's potential is fully harnessed. Powered by Help Plan Foundation Nigeria, Echoes Africa Initiatives New York, International Center for Diplomacy, Morocco. No. My name is Dr. Panayam Percy Paul. Hi there, my name is Reverend John Oguze. And I want to personally invite you to the Middle Belt Praise Festival. Yes, the first Middle Belt Praise Festival. God wants us to come together as one and begin to love one another so that he can flow through us to be a blessing, not just to us, but to the rest of Nigeria and perhaps the whole world. For the first time in over 100 years, the Middle Belters are coming together as one. We have people coming from every corner of the Middle Belt. Great music, great praise and powerful worship. All these 
series is taking place from the 18th, 19th, and 20th of October 2019 at the Ecumenical Center right here in Abuja. I look forward to seeing you there. You are welcome. of TV Guide is out exclusively taking a look at the traditional television and new media. Are they comparable or complementary? Media industry players give perspective on the trends, progress, challenges and the way forward. Find out on this compelling edition of TV Guide. Expository interviews with stars of the team within our space. Becky Madajemo of NTA, Utibe Umore of AIT, Nifemi Oguntai of TVC and a host of others. TV Guy, your indispensable companion, also feature Ya Medina. <laughs> A TV drama series on NTA. Let's get to meet the characters behind Yama Dinar. This edition also presents exciting features on tourism, culture, entertainment, sports, health, and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendors near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit 2019 holds on the 6th to the 8th of November 2019. The summit will take place at the Banquet Hall Presidential Villa, Abuja, Nigeria. Theme, leveraging diaspora resources for economic growth, sectors, agribusiness, education, training, healthcare, entertainment, sports, hospitality and tourism, infrastructure and real estate, manufacturing, extractive industries, telecommunications, technology and innovation, waste management and environmental remediation, transportation. For registration, visit www.ndis.gov.ng. For participation and sponsorship, please call 090-177-7708-0817-2244-660. Convened by the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Thanks for staying. Commuters and motorists plying the Mina Suleja Road in Niger State are groaning under persistent gridlock caused by the condition of the road and breakdown of articulated tracks. Dada Mohammed has a situation report. All day that we will not get go slow, both morning and evening. And in fact, we need assistance. This time around, the trailers are much. I don't know if they don't have another road. It's only Niger. So the way the roads are, the vehicles are falling on, on, on this road, it's, it's a, these are dead traps. You have heard it from a cross section of commuters and motorists on the Mina Chenchega Peiko Road, which is the highway leading into Mina, the Niger State capital, from various parts of the country. The road, whose condition has progressively worsened over time due to recent upsurge of traffic, especially especially by articulated trucks and other heavy-duty vehicles, has become unpassable, causing users like students and others to trek long distances. It is quite unfortunate that all these trailers are the ones constituting all these problems on this road. So I beg make government help us check the situation like this. The Niger State government says efforts made to address the situation as a temporary basis have not yielded the required results. It's only if the federal government will come to our aid by ensuring that they take, you know, they, they work on the major routes that are meant for these articulated vehicles and trailers. But in the meantime, you know, to ease movement along that section of road, are going to make that place motorable pending when tractor will come for the reconstruction of that section of the road. Meanwhile, machinery have again been mobilized to ameliorate the sufferings of commuters and ease the traffic. This is one of several bus spots on the 20 kilometer Mina Chanchaga Peiko Road that has become a nightmare for motorists. While some members of the public have resorted to self help to assist motorists plying the route, security agents have come on ground to ensure free flow of traffic from Mina. Dada Mohammed, NTA News. And our next report from Enugu says the Corps Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, Dr. Bobuye Uyeyemi, has advised personnel of the Corps to desist from corrupt practices and other acts capable of damaging the image of the Corps as well as their career progression. 
The Corps Marshal gave the advice during a strategic session with the Corps Unit Commanders at the FRSC Academy Enugu. Jude Abugo reports. Reputed for displaying high level of professionalism, discipline, integrity, and uprightness in discharge of their duties, the Corps Marshal expressed worry that some personnel are trying to bring the hard-earned image of the agency to disrepute. He warned that personnel caught engaging in corrupt practices will be prosecuted. Partnership with uh, ICPC and DSS. We've had some operations now at about 70. The first operation led to the arrest of about 38. The second operation led to the arrest of about 32 with their fifth person, who is not a staff. I have discussed with the chairman, they must be prosecuted to serve as deterrents. The forum, which has the team upholding leadership excellence for operational efficiency, according to Dr. Oyeyemi, is to ensure that all the tiers of the course command remain committed to making Nigeria Road one of the safest globally by the year 2020. In Enugu, Jude Abugu, NTA News. Barely two days after a tanker explosion raised over 3,000 shops in Ochanja Market, Onisha, another fine accident involving a petrol tanker has occurred in the early hours of Friday, burning dozens of vehicles and about four buildings at Omagba Phase 2, Onisha. Ekene Dulwe has the details. The fire accident was said to have occurred when a tank filled with petroleum products fell off the back of a truck along the Omaba axis of Enugu Onitsha Expressway and spilled its contents on the road and drainages. The neighborhood woke up around 2 a.m. to witness a huge fire consuming vehicles parked along the road. Fortunately, men of the Anambra State Fire Service arrived on time before the fire could get to a nearby gas plant. I heard an unusual noise and woke up only to see everywhere red. I looked out from the window. I saw every, the road burning. Everywhere was burning. We thought it was the gas plant. We now started running downstairs. Then people were shouting, women were shouting, carrying their children, fire, fire. I was sleeping. Woke up in the morning, saw many missed calls. Decided to call one. So he just told me that my caterpillar is burning. However, People living in Omaba Phase 2 were not so lucky as the petrol that found its way to the drainages transmitted fire to that part of furniture. Over 20 vehicles parked in a mechanics workshop and residential buildings were touched. The fire is happening at the express. By the time I got, got down to the floor, the fire itself has got to the fence here. The man that had a boat hole here were able to open the boat hole. All this front flat. All the uh, uh, properties inside, especially the uh, uh, clothing materials, all the bed sheets, all these things affected. Residents say this is one accident too many and cannot help but wonder if there could ever be a lasting solution to accidents involving petrol tankers. In Onicha, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. In the same vein, for weeks now, fire disasters from fuel tanker explosions have inundated the media space with Nigerians seeking answers to the disturbing trend. The Onitsha and Lagos fires, as well as near disasters in these cities, the roles of individuals and agencies of government are also currently on the front burner. Comptroller General FCT Fire Service Julius Okwetusen joined us earlier to speak to these issues. The tanker fire is a very dangerous fire, and when it happens, it spreads. That fire is not attacked I mean, immediately. I mean, it, it can be a devastating uh, uh, situation. When there is fire incident like that, make sure you call the fire service, I mean, nearest to you, fire station nearest to the uh, place of the incident. How Every local government in the fire and in the state is supposed to have a functional fire station, <laughs> because that's what will reduce the response time. For example, in, in, in FCT, uh, we have uh, at least 14 fast functional stations in, in FCT. So and when there is fire, you turn out the nearest fire station to the, uh, to the scene of the incident. And that's what helps us to maintain five minutes uh, response time in FCT. Let's now join our Lagos Network Center for stories from that zone. Jennifer is our guide. Hello, Jennifer. 
Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Lagos. Another fire disaster was this Friday averted in Lagos when a trailer laden with cement collided with a tanker heavily laden with petrol products in Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos. Uzezi Arure reports that the quick intervention by officials of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency and Fire Service saved the day. According to eyewitness accounts, the accident was caused by the trailer driver who wanted to avoid a mild traffic. The driver ignored the traffic light and rammed into the fuel tanker, causing its contents to spill. We had a bit of uh, PMS spillage and of course we moved into action. The incident was brought under control by the Lasema officials and firefighters who arrived at the scene of the incident on time to prevent a fire outbreak and loss of lives. Tankers and articulated vehicle accidents are common features in Lagos State. This propelled the FRSC to hold a number of meetings with key players in the oil and gas business and other truck owners on the need to adhere strictly to operational safe to load inauguration to reduce the spate of accidents among this group of drivers on the nation's high way. In Lagos, Uzezi Arure, NTA News. Still on road safety, meanwhile, training and retraining of motorists, especially tanker drivers, have been identified as key to reducing the spate of road crashes on Nigerian roads. This was the thrust of the meeting held with tanker drivers by the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRSC, in Lagos to sensitize them more as activities peak towards the end of the year. Diana Ajale reports. Data by the National Bureau of Statistics reveals that between 2018 and 2019, a total of 1,331 Nigerians died in road accidents. Out of the figure, 94% were adults, while 6% were children. This sensitization program is aimed at retraining tanker drivers, whose major duty is to move hazardous products across the country. They were urged to be cautious and consider safety while driving to reduce road crashes. The idea behind it all is to reduce crashes as much as possible to be very minimum. You know how important tanker drivers are to the economy of Nigeria. So it's our belief that if we synthesize them well and we remind them of those things that they ought to do on the road, crashes will further reduce. About 2,000 tanker drivers will be trained in Lagos. Why some, uh, across the countries, we have thousands of tanker drivers that will be trained. Our objective is to talk to them, to let them know the impact of why they are driving on the road. Any accident involving a tanker driver is always a disaster. So what we took upon ourselves is to see that drivers, they are oddly on the roads. Participant lauded the program, stating it will go a long way in having an accident-free environment. Again, many things where I never knew. Part of driving from outside town to inside town. A lot. Many things I don't know, particularly on the, uh, that is, road guidelines, rules, traffic laws. They have taught us. The theme of the training is national safety. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Now, the global consensus and a call to action for increased participation of women in the technological sector and businesses to boost the economy took center stage at the 2019 Lagos State Chamber of Commerce and Industry Conference in Lagos. Annie Daniels reports that the theme of the conference is Digital Revolution, Women Entrepreneurs. Available statistics by the National Bureau of Statistics shows that Information and communication technology is currently Nigeria's second fastest growing sector with a growth figure of 9.25% in the first half of 2019. Experts at this conference, we are quick to point out that ICT remains critical to sustainable economic development, a vital tool for women empowerment. A lot of the business owners even engage IT personnel to develop websites for them. Most times they get stranded. No matter how small this business is, there is a lot of benefit in using technology in driving one's business. There's a lady who sells um, dried fish and she's gone global with it. 
she's added a lot of technology into um, drying the fish. The experts added that women entrepreneurs cannot compete adequately without massive deployments of robots, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, and related technologies. Food cooks, for example, are becoming obsolete, are going to become obsolete because of the advancement in technology. Technology is not abstract, but actually involving, and it's something we must use on a daily basis to actually tell our stories. Studies have shown that about 95% of jobs have digital components. So, women are advised to harness the power of digital media to grow their businesses and remain relevant. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. That's a contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Lydia, back to you. Many thanks, Jennifer. President Muhammadu Buhari has made a passionate appeal to well-meaning Nigerians who genuinely support the fight against drug abuse in view of its devastating consequences on the socio-economic well-being of the country. He said winning the war is one of the critical elements of the next level mandate of his administration. The president made the appeal while receiving the report of the Presidential Advisory Committee on the Elimination of Drug Abuse. The rate of chemical abuse and substance dependence is becoming increasingly prevalent among Nigerian youths, and this has given rise to drug-induced violent acts. To address the global phenomenon, medical experts are advocating stricter legislation against drug substance abuse, as well as regular sensitization on the dangers inherent. Elizabeth Omori reports that these were part of recommendations by medical experts at a forum on drug reduction in Nigeria. Drug and substance abuse, medical experts say, is a global phenomenon which must be tackled holistically. The current 2018 National Survey on Drug Use in Nigeria shows that 14.3 million people, representing approximately 14.4% of the country's population between the ages of 15 and 64, abused drugs and substances in the past one year. Cannabis, hemp, aphrodisiacs, tramadol, codeine, and other painkillers Health caregivers say as some of the drugs and substances abused, which are associated with side effects such as hallucination, depression, emotional instability, and sudden death from seizure. To see to the reduction in the use of drugs and chemical substances is the essence of this forum. It is a problem that affects everyone. So the coming together of professionals, both uh, the core and allied professionals, is to focus on evidence-based intervention in the area of prevention, treatment, policies, and recovery. Creation of jobs for teaming youths, stricter laws on drugs and substance abuse, proper parenting and regular sensitization on the dangers of drugs and substance abuse. Medical experts say are ways to curb the menace. Individuals must come up, faith-based organizations. We must redirect our sermons in churches and mosques to face the reality of our challenges. We should look at our policy again of drug demand reduction in such a manner that it becomes holistic. Parents are, however, advised to monitor the activities of their children when unusual behaviors are exhibited. Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. Still on health, more than 5,000 persons from Nasero State are benefiting from free eye screening, treatment, and surgery by Kingdom of Saudi Arabia humanitarian organization in collaboration with Nasero State government. Issa Mohammed reports from Lafia. Mala Ilyas Unusa, who is from Shabu, seven kilometers away from Lafia, the state capital, has been with glaucoma in his right eyes for five years. He says at the period he was tested at a primary health care center in his locality, LEDCA, he has no money to carry out surgery to enable him fully recover his sight. And my appreciation goes to those who contributed with this. So I can say, I thank God, may God bless them. Leader of the team, and an optician with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia organization, Al-Basar International, and King Salam 
Humanitarian Aids and Relief Center says the program targets mainly indigents, out of which 500 people with glaucoma and cataract will undergo surgery. The people who have came for this uh, camp, ranging from pterygium, cataracts, glaucoma, and other different eye ailments. So we try and give them medicines. While others with minor cases of eyes irritation, long and short sight seeing, will be given eyeglasses and adequate counseling to improve on their sight. The free eye screening and surgery is a one-week exercise holding at the Dalhatu Arab Specialist Hospital, Lafia. In Lafia, I am Isam Hamad, NTA News. And in Ibadan, social and community development workers have been enjoined to employ human and material resources to achieve goals and objectives in chosen humanitarian services. Rufaya Anima Shaun Badmas reports that this appeal was made at a women gathering in Ibadan, or your state capital. Voluntary service providers are a special category of personnel who sacrifice their time, resources, and skills towards accomplishing tasks in any organization that requires the services. Workers employed by non government organizations and volunteers have been told to, among other things, respect their terms of employment and work with others in achieving set objectives. I want them to be steadfast. I want them to be, uh, to be all doing. I want them to start looking for opportunities. They need to partner and collaborate with development agencies. Uh, funding institutions, research institutes. Women focused NGO workers who are doing tremendous work at the community level. We would like them to do the business in the way that are acceptable, following best practices all over the world. The Association of Women Orientations for Sustainable Development in Nigeria made up of female NGO workers and volunteers have implemented over 200 projects across Oyo State. Aid Ibadan, Bofia and Imasha Batmos, NTA News. Let's now join Mohammed in Meduguri for stories from that zone. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Lydia. Thank you and welcome to Meduguri. Plans are underway to establish Borno State University Teaching Hospital as a prerequisite to creation of Faculty of Medicine in the State University alongside faculties of Engineering and Environmental Studies. Governor Babagana Umara announced this at the inaugural meeting of the Senate of the Borno State University. Mohamed Goni reports. The Borno State Government had in 2009 set up a technical and planning committee for the establishment of the State University. The big establishing the university was signed into law in 2012, leading to subsequent establishment of the institution in 2016. Governor Babagana Omara said his administration places a prime position to education, being the most important factor for economic development in the 21st century, adding that the State Government will invest heavily in education to create better educational opportunities and to liberate the society from the dangerous ideologies of the insurgents. The main objective of this administration is to promote science education and therefore we have identified three main faculties, especially faculty of engineering, faculty of medicine as well as faculty of environmental studies. If you want to have the faculty of medicine on ground, one of the requirements is to have the state university teaching hospital. Vice Chancellor of the Borno State University, who is also the Chairman of the Senate, Professor Omar Kiari Sandabi said, the university has in place all the required infrastructure in order to commence academic activities this 2019-2020 academic session for four faculties and 33 programs. The four faculties, according to the Vice Chancellor, include Faculty of Art and Education, Social and Management Sciences, Sciences and Agriculture, adding that already 268 students have made the list of the first batch of admission exercise. In Maiduguri, Mamut Goni, NTNU. About 90,000 persons in Jerry local government area of Borno State have benefited from free medical outreach by the Nigerian Air Force. Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Aboka, represented by Air Task Force Commander Operation Lafia Adoli, Air Commander Precious Amadi, stated this while monitoring conduct of the exercise in Meduguri. Aboka Mawed Musa reports. The free 
Free Medical Outreach is a continuation of the Nigerian Air Force provision of healthcare services to less privileged members of the society across the country, hence conducting the exercise this time around in Meduguri within the host community in order to cover a significant number of the populace. Air Task Force Commander Operation Lafia Doli, Air Commodore Precious Amadi said the medical outreach is in line with the Chief of Air Staff's vision towards promoting civil military relationship with emphasis on women and aged persons considering their vulnerability. Chief of Air Staff also we run a level four hospital in Dalori IDP camp and Bama IDP camp. And furthermore, we feed 1,000 children every day. Director, Public Health and Humanitarian Services, Nigerian Air Force Headquarters, Abuja, Group Captain Ali Tanku noted that the medical intervention will include screening and conducting series of tests on different ailments such as high blood pressure, diabetes and sight impairment before the administration of drugs and other health services. We are going to do surgeries, general surgeries, we are going to do eye surgeries, we are going to do medical consultations and diagnosis, we are going to give out free donation of mosquito treated nets as well as abendazo as form of immunization. Executive Chairman Borno State Emergency Management Agency Yaba Okolo, who represented Governor Babagana Umara, described the support as a major achievement to the state in general in view of the contemporary health challenges confronting the people. The beneficiaries commended the Nigerian Air Force for bringing health care services to their doorsteps in Meduguri, Abu Wakar Mohammed Musa, NTA News. In other news, National Human Rights Commission in collaboration with United Nations High Commission for Refugees, have interfaced with ministries, departments, and agencies of government with mandate to ensure adequate protection and realization of rights of internally displaced persons due to insurgency and other armed conflicts in the Northeast. Neomuna Garba reports. The interface with humanitarian actors is to promote and facilitate information sharing on areas of humanitarian activities in Borno State toward providing link between the communities and the MDAs to enable them respond faster to the challenges faced by the persons of concern. The IDP's protection monitoring project commenced in February this year in three project states of Adamawa, Borno and Yobi where protection monitors were trained to work closely with protection action groups in different IDP camps and host communities to identify and report protection issues as well as referring them to different MDAs for appropriate responses. We, we are sensitizing them here to realize that when these complaints come, they are not mere paper. Unless they resolve them, some people are suffering. The meeting, according to the Executive Secretary National Human Rights Commission, Tony Ojuku, will be held annually to keep harnessing the potentials of coordinated and collective action by all. In a goodwill message, representatives of UNHCR, Ministry of Education and that of Justice, Police and the NBA commended the foresight of the organizers for the initiative, stressing the need for sustaining the program in Borno. In my degree, my Munagaraba, NTA News. That's our contribution on Nationwide. Let's take you to Abuja. Many thanks, Mohammed. President Mohammed Buhari congratulates former head of state General Yakubu Gowon on his 85th birthday, describing him as a living legend and symbol of national unity. A statement by the special advisor to the president, media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, says General Gowon's visionary leadership style, wisdom, and disciplined outlook kept the country as one, extolling the former head of state for his faith and steadfastness in God in times of adversity and courageously pursuing the interest of majority Nigerians for a unified and stronger country. The president says he believes the elder statesman laid a solid foundation for the country to, tr to thrive with the creation of federating units and implementation of futuristic policies like the National Youth Service Corps that has consistently served the purpose of fostering unity, harmony, and expanding the horizons of young Nigerians for lifetime opportunities. He congratulates the family members, friends, and close associates of the exemplary leadership leadership style on the auspicious occasion of his 85th birthday, praying that the Almighty God will always remember his sacrifices for the nation and grant him good health and strength to keep working for the good of the country and humanity.
Meanwhile, Plattuset Governor and Chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, Right Honorable Simon Bakula Long, has described the former Head of State General Yakubu Gowan as a rare gift to the state and the world because of his exemplary lifestyle and enormous sacrifices towards nation building and global peace. Governor Lalong, in a statement by his Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Makut Simon Macham, says, General Gowan, as a distinguished statesman, gentleman, prayer warrior, and bridge builder, continue to provide inspiration and hope for the nation as it wades through its challenges. While wishing the celebrant good health, God's grace, and divine strength, Lalong urges General Gowan not to relent in deploying his wealth of experience and knowledge in the pursuit of unity and national integration. The governor says Plateau State is proud of the former head of state whose sense of duty and responsibility throughout his military career and other national and international assignments remain a shining example for generations to come. Chief executives of ministries, departments and agencies may soon have a framework that is expected to define the scope liability and nature of information technology it projects to minimize failures. The Framework for Information Technology Services Level Agreement for MDAs is developed by National Information Technology De Development Agency, NITA. Joseph Johnson has details of the document. Consumer protection is a win-win situation for both the consumer and service providers. NITDA knows this for a fact, and that is why, to drive this further, the agency says the Framework for Information Technology Service Level Agreement for MDS covers the basic elements that are primarily responsible for contract failure and other inefficiencies in the delivery of government information projects. NITDA therefore intends to protect the users of information technology products against substandard edge products and services in Nigeria. Some of these challenges that we at the FCCPC usually see are issues that deal with warranties which the document addresses. With all the terms and conditions reflected in the document, representatives of various MDS would have to do a little more than just read it to get conversant with its content. That perhaps explains the deliberations. With this framework, it will be a proper guideline such that we will have good quality of service from the providers. It will help us in terms of data protection. If effectively implemented, NITDA believes the framework would improve service delivery in the sector and check corrupt practices. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. The All Progressives Congress commends President Muhammad Buhari's approval of the immediate implementation of sweeping cost-saving measures aimed at instilling financial discipline and prudence, particularly on government trips. In a statement by the party's National Publicity Secretary, Larry Isonilu, APC also welcomes the presidential directive to ministers and other heads of government agencies to suspend foreign travels and defend their budgets before the National Assembly. This, it says, will not only foster legislative executive relations, but also ensure that budget passage is speedy and returned to the January-December cycle. The party commended government decision which clearly states the classes of tickets approved for government officials on official trips. In effect, ministers, permanent secretaries, special advisors, senior special assistants to the president, Chairman of extra ministerial departments and chief executive officers of parastatals are allowed to fly business class. Other categories of public officers are to travel on economic class. APC says the era of the People's Democratic Party's governments, when ministers and other senior government appointees splashed the nation's commonwealth on private jet trips, first class tickets, and limousines to ferry family and cronies around are over. More reports ahead on Nationwide. Do stay with us. Let's come together as we celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity, showcase our creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival for Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, in the Asian city of Benin, Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Theme, our royalty, our pride. Holding 19 
date through 26th of October 2019. Highlights will include drama, children poetry performance, essay writing competition, crafts competition, indigenous cuisine, traditional wrestling, indigenous fabrics in royal apparel, cultural quiz competition, board games, and much more. Oh yes, it's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, Edo State, Nigeria, holding 19th to 26th October 2019. We are celebrating our heritage. Otsumba Olushe Burunshiwe, Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Anamusa. History was made in Africa with the birth of the first television station, WNTV, in Ibadan, Nigeria, on October 31, 1959. I have great pleasure in formally launching Western Nigeria television first in Africa. Television in Africa clocks 60 this year. It's time to celebrate this remarkable achievement. Various activities are lined up. Photo exhibition, a colloquium, public presentation of broadcasting books, and a gala night. Be part of these events powered by Foundation for Ibado Television Anniversary Celebrations, FITAC. And supported by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The NTA and the Village Headmaster family are pleased to announce the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the award-winning Village Headmaster television series. Monday, 28 October 2019, command performances of the Village Headmaster at the Terraculture Arena, Victoria Island, Lagos, Red Carpet, 5 p.m., and live performance, 6 p.m. Tuesday, 29th October 2019, at 10 a.m., Roundtable Discussion at Freedom Park, Broad Street, Lagos. Theme, Drama, a tool for national development. Join the NTA and the Village Headmaster family as we celebrate this Golden Jubilee. Attendance at both events is strictly by invitation. Announcer, Organizing Committee. To the glory of God, we celebrate the life of our beloved matriarch, mother, grandmother, sister, auntie, and wife, Madame Evumena Rosaline Efeludu, aged 84 years. Burial arrangement, Thursday, 17th October 2019, service of songs, time 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, 22 Okere Road, Wari Delta State. Friday, 18th October, commendation service at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, time 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Interment at a residence in Odo Zeho Town before Delta Glass Company. Time 12 noon. In-laws visit at a residence. Time 12 noon to 1 p.m. Guest entertainment at Odo Zeho Town Primary School Field. Time 1 p.m. Sunday 20th October 2019. Out in service at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, Okere Road, Wari Delta State. Time 9 a.m. RSVP Pastor Ray Efe Yubavre 0802-30 023729 Family Announcer Welcome back. President Muhammad Buhari congratulates Sir Kessington Adebu Kola Adebutu on conferment of the title Odole Odua by His Imperial Majesty Oni Adeye Eniton Ogunwusi Arole Odua Ojaja the Second. In a statement, the president also commends Sir Adebutu for setting up a foundation that caters for the weak and vulnerable and for his adventurous spirit of delving into unattractive ventures and turning them into areas of employment and profitable careers. The president, while reflecting on the title which was last held by Chief Obafemi Awolowo, President Buhari urged Sir Adebutu to keep up the good work that heralded such a worthy recognition. The president also felicitates with wives of the businessman Dame Caroline Oladuni Adebutu and Yeye Koforola Adebutu, who are also conferred with titles Yeye Mode Odua and Yeye Rewa Odua, respectively. Next is sports update. The 20th Ladies Clothes Tournament is underway at the IPB International.